CalPads error resolution CERT 145, special education record missing for student enrolled in private school. All right, so we have before you is an excerpt from the CalPads error list. And the reason why it's the first thing we're going to talk about, it's the first thing you should do when you are troubleshooting any error is retrieve the CalPads error list and consult it. So we use the first two columns, the error number and the error name to identify the information about the error that we want. The third column from the left is the error description. It tells us the problem. Student enrolled in a private school must have an associated special education record in the same LEA. Okay, that tells me the problem, but it doesn't tell me why a student enrolled in a private school must have a SPED record, right? We have to look at other documentation to find that out. The fields validated, the column in the center tells us where we would be looking, right? And we'd be looking at our rejected record if this was a submission error, but since it's a certification error, this is strictly from the CalPEDS ODS. So it says SENR, we're gonna be looking at the student's enrollment history. When it says SPED, we're gonna be looking at the special education program history. So we're gonna be looking at the enrollment and we're gonna be comparing the school of attendance, the student using the SSID, the enrollment start and the exit dates, and then we're going to be looking at the special education program record, finding the right LEA, finding the same student using the SSID, looking at the special education meeting date and the education plan type code. And so the suggested resolution column on the far right tells us two things. It gives us a suggested resolution, a method of uh, resolving the error. And then it also helps us understand the conditions in CalPads or reiterates the problem. It's important to understand the expectations or the conditions of CalPads because we have to know our student data and what CalPads expect to know the correct method of resolution. The suggested resolution tells you how to fix the error, but it may not be the correct method based on your student's data. You have to analyze the different factors and what the overall objective is, right? You have to understand why a student enrolled in a private school must have an associated SPED record before you do anything, all right? So we will read the last column, understanding the error. A student enrolled in a private school should have a special education record with the active plan 200 for the associated LEA. What's an active plan 200? An education plan 300, 700, 800, or 900 for the associate LEA is also acceptable. Um, and then the suggested resolution has three steps. Step one, verify the student has not exited the program. Step two, verify the student enrollment start date and exit date at the LEA. And step three, add the special education record for the student at the LEA. So you can refer to the CalPEDS code set when you look at the error list and don't understand of specific code. So it said in the error list, students should have an active plan 200, right? So we go to the code set, we look at education plan type code 200, and we can see that's an individual service plan. The individual service plan is written plan for each student with a disability part B and enrolled in a private school. ISP statements may identify goals, yada, 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 right? So, okay, that's specifically for private schools. That's cool. What are 300, 700, 800, and 900? Well, those are also described in the code set, right? 300 is pending, a student has referred. So obviously you should not be penalized with the fatal error if the student's record's pending, but you should denote that and submit the record to CalPATS. A 700, no education plan, the parent declined FAPE. 800, eligible for, the student was found eligible, but still has no education plan for other reasons. And then those other reasons are described here. And then simply put, the student is 900 not eligible. Okay, so we see the acceptable education plan type codes that will resolve the error if we submit a record. You can also use other document to reference business rules and requirements. And one such document is the CalPATS data guide. And so, Here's a chart that tells you how to enroll students. There's a special education section in the CalPATS data guide, and that's where this chart was retrieved from. And you can see K through 12 students attending private schools receiving services. It tells you to enroll them in code a six zeros followed by a two using enrollment status 50, non-ADA, all right? So this is how CalPATS identifies students that need an ISP because you're enrolled at a private school. 
These are special education students. How should they be enrolled? I'm going to tell you other information like file types and records they may need. Uh, that's not relevant to this error. But the CalPATH Data Guide is a good resource document to find out why you must have data because it tells you the business rules. So now we're going to demonstrate how to resolve a CERT 145 error. Okay, so we're on the Fall 1 Certification Detail screen. Um, we're going to scroll down and look at our certification validation errors. And today we're going to be looking at the CERT 145 special education program record missing for a student enrolled at a private school. We have one such error. And if we click show, that student's record will be revealed. I always like to right click the link, open in a new tab, just so I can preserve this screen as I come back and work on my other errors. So I've done that, and here we have the student's information in front of you. But before we get started, um, we should always consult the CalPADS error list. It's always located in the footer. So if we scroll down, you can access the error list here. But I've already saved a copy of the error list to my desktop. I don't have to download it. And I've already filtered it. Now there's a video called Navigating the Error List that would explain how to filter and use this document. However, I've already done that. And as you can see, the two columns on the left are my error number, CERT 145, and the name. Now, the third column tells me the problem. This is the error description. Student enrolled in a private school must have an associated special education record in the same reporting LEA. Straightforward, right? You have reported a student who's enrolled in a private school. We expect a special education record. Their error CERT 145 is triggering because we don't see it. All right. And so now uh, the fields validated tells you where to look for your discrepancy, what's triggering the error. And we're going to be looking at uh, the student enrollment record and then the special education record. And the student enrollment record confirming that the student is enrolled in our LEA and is enrolled in a private school. And so those fields that you see will identify that, right? The school of attendance tells us what school the student's at. The enrollment start and exit dates tells us the period of effective enrollment or active enrollment to see if it's relevant over this particular snapshot. Uh, and then the SSID, we're confirming what student we're looking at. Then the special education record for that student, we're going to identify using the same SSID so that the enrollment and the special education record are for the same student. And then we're looking for the plan type and the special education meeting date. And the plan type is important because uh, special education students have specific plan types that are enrolled in private school. All right, so then suggested resolution gives us greater information about either the problem or the expectation in CalPATS. And it says a student enrolled in a private school should have a special education record with the active plan type 200 for the associated LEA or an education plan 300, 700, 800, or 900 for the associated LEA. So either the student is on the ISP or they have some reason why they don't have an active plan. Otherwise, they cannot be enrolled at a private school. All right. That's what it's basically telling us. And then it tells us how you can correct this. So what are the steps? Suggested resolution. Step one, first verify the student has not exited the program. Certainly, if the students exited the program, we would not expect for the student to have any type of active education plan. Second, verify the student enrollment start and exit dates at the LEA. Make sure the student's enrolled at the proper school. Perhaps we've misreported the student in the enrollment record. And then step three, add the special education record for the student. Simply put, if the student is a private school student and everything else is looking pretty legit, we need to submit the missing record. All right, so that's what the error list tells us. That's cool. So we're going to look at the student's record and we're looking at the enrollment record. And I can see that the student has an open enrollment at a private school. Everything looks reported correctly. The student has a correct enrollment status. I know it's a private school because this group code is six zeros followed by a two. I can see that this is an active record. One, because there's no enrollment exit date and this was submitted this year. So one would expect, because we don't report private school enrollments unless they're special education students, uh, to CalPADS, one would expect to see a special education record 
uh, for the student. And quite simply, there are none. They have yet to be reported. And so you have to know the student's data, right? Because when I look at the enrollment record, there's a couple conflicting things, right? There's a private school enrollment reported, but there's also a public school enrollment at a different LEA. I don't know if the student was enrolled and then left. I don't know if the student who was enrolled at the private school here at Gilroy Unified left and weren't able to get the IEP or the ISP information. I'm not sure, but that's why you have to reference the other documentation like the CalPATS code set and other codes. Perhaps the student's record was pending. Perhaps parents denied FAPE. There's several different codes that can be used in the education plan type besides just 200, 300, 700, 800, 900 are among those that describe this scenario for you. And so if one, if the student was legitimately enrolled in your district at a private school and left in a short amount of time, obviously this is a three month window, the beginning of July and the end of September, you wanna be able to report that student's special education program. So you have to know your student data. Also, you have to know what's expected, right? Because you can't report an IEP or IFSP for a student enrolled at a private school. It's not going to work. And so you have to report the correct plan here. I mean, the student special education program record, we can see no plan was reported. It's missing outright. And so in this scenario, the resolution isn't quite forward because I don't know the student's data, right? I don't know if there's a enrollment history can be corrected or if they just haven't submitted the, the plan yet. And I don't know which plan they should submit because I don't know if the student in fact had an ISP prescribed or if the student is pending or declined FAPE or was found ineligible. I don't know. So we we'll leave that to you, uh, the student expert, the LEA. That's how you would resolve a CERT 145.